your brain, you're in the nuts domain. Come on in, it's about to begin. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Nerds Domain Podcast. Uh, this week, I'm here with Tiny from The Obsessive Viewer. Hey, guys. Um, and Tiny and I just went and saw Insurgent. That was Insurgent, right? Insurgent, the Divergent Insurgents, yes. Yeah, because I spent the last, like, five minutes of the movie that was clearly just setting up for the next movie going, what's the next? Is it Resurgence? Is that the name of the next movie? <laughs> what's the next one? Um, real quick, I want to thank our Patreon subscriber, Jay. Uh, Jay, we appreciate that you are subscribing and all that you have done for us, all $5 of it, and we hope to see all $5 of it next month, too. Um, remember, folks, if you want to subscribe to our Patreon and support us, you can go over to patreon.com slash nerdsdomain and do that there, and we will announce your name, and not just a letter, we would give you a whole name if you'd like, um, and tell everybody about how awesome you are right here on the podcast, on all of our podcasts. So, with that kind of <laughs> quick little commercial there out of the way... I'm used to it. Uh, you you actually saw Divergent, right? I did, yes. Did you see it in the theater? No, I just watched it at home, uh, which I'm glad I did, because yeah. I really didn't care for it. I, I'm not going to say it was a bad movie, but it definitely was not... It was definitely a January movie, which is where they put it. Yeah. Um, it wasn't terrible. It was better than I Frankenstein. Yeah, well, it doesn't get much worse <laughs> than that, so... Uh, well, there's at least one. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, so, uh, first, we're at Studio Movie Girl. We're recording live in kind of their, I don't know, hidden away lobby. I didn't yeah, even know it was here. It's tucked back here, but yeah, it's kinda, perfect for our purposes. Yeah, I kind of like it. Um, yeah. So, Studio Movie Girl, if, if you guys aren't familiar with, you should look up. It's a great little movie house slash um, restaurant kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um it's very nice. Um, they have some very nice rules about um, disruptive patrons and removing them, and yeah. they try and make you have a, a good experience, not just a movie. So that, I, I like that. And the food is good. Yeah. I've been yeah. here twice, and both times. Like, this time I got the fish and chips. It was awesome. Oh, yeah. I got – I always pass up pork chops every time, <laughs> and then this time I was like, pork chop, eat with your hands. And I'm like, yeah, I will. And the only <laughs> problem with the pork chop was there was one. Oh, I needed, really? like, four of those. Because it literally, it was the bone that came out, so I could hold it like a club and just chew on it. And it was <laughs> delicious. And the mac and cheese had pieces of pork in it. Oh, wow. That was really good, too. So yeah. Nice. I, I, I like the food here. We never had a bad meal here. Nice. So, um, so Insurgent, I don't know the director. I didn't do any of the technical work on this, because why would I want to do that? Yeah. Prepare for the podcast. Me either. Um, honestly, I just wanted to come out and see a movie and get it on the podcast cause yeah. it's been such a long time since we've done an immediate movie review. Okay. Um, I want to say the last one was like Edge of Tomorrow. Oh, wow. That was last summer. Yeah, that we recorded here. Wow. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. Have you have you seen, you've, you saw Divergent. Yeah. How long ago was that? Uh, Man, that was back, I don't know, probably this time last year when I saw okay. it. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, we, you saw it at home. I saw it at home, too. I, it was not something, I knew it was coming up, and the concept interested me. I'm yeah. always up for a dystopic future kind of deal, mm-hmm. but, I don't know, it's another young adult book. Yeah, like, and the, the, it, it has, it falls into too many subgenres that are just stale yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah. Young adult, uh, young adult, dystopic future... There's, it's very Orwellian, you know, yeah. Big Brother stuff. It's just played out, unfortunately. Yeah, and I mean, not that I don't appreciate the Hunger Games for what it is, but I really feel like this is just riding those coattails for no other reason than to ride the coattails and try and make more money. Yeah. Um, I didn't find the first one bad. Um, I, there were, there were a couple of places here in this one that I went really. <laughs> like they couldn't figure out a way, yeah. or really, that's what the director's doing. Like, I really hate the quick, like, there's the building off of the distance. Let's zoom super fast, yeah, into this one little window. And I, there's a lot of that in this movie. Yeah, um, there's I, some questionable tech choices. Like, oh, well, there's this thing that we totally couldn't figure out how to. Remo- you really couldn't figure out how to remove that. Like, I can think of four ways. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, and then, and then the movie explained irony to us. I know. Like, oh my gosh! Explained what irony was, and I it murdered me. There like, was some bad dialogue in this. Yeah, uh, yeah. I feel especially bad for um, uh, Kate Winslet's Kate Winslet yeah. because I mean she just yeah. has to. She's basically an exposition machine. Yeah, that's um, all she does. <laughs> yeah, she's like, I'm thinking of all the divergences the same, but they're different. 
it's like thank you for externalizing that for the audience. Yeah. It's uh, really it's just cheap writing. It's lowest common denominator. And I don't I know if the book is like that. I, I mean, don't know either. Yeah. The book could be perfectly fine, but in that translation to a screen, to screenplay and then to the screen, I I just don't. There's always that risk. Yeah. 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 Um. I don't know. So the story, the story from the first one is that. There's this um, city. It's Chicago. Yeah. And it's made pretty plain that it's Chicago. I think they yeah. come out right outright and say it if you don't just see it on things. And Definitely. I recognize the pier and what was Lake Michigan. Right. Um, I think the Sears Tower is pretty prominently featured. Is it, yeah, as well. that's that's very possible. At but least in the first one. It's totally like post post whatever happened, and um, you know there's this city divided into five factions, and then right. there's the factions. So each faction has a specific job and duties and so on and so forth. Uh huh. I like the concept for it. I really do. I think it's great. I don't know if the way they went about this whole Divergent thing is super great. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not sure about it either. I think the factions are just kind of... It's just kind of weird. It's just... It's different in that... It's different in that... With the Hunger Games, we have people who are basically forced into their circumstances because the, the country's divided. Yeah. It's on a bigger scale, of course. That makes a little more sense because you're born into this thing. But with, with this movie, you have choice. Yeah. And it seems weird that such a... Um, such I hate to use the word again, but Orwellian yeah. government or like a, you know, a, a, a tyrannical government would give people choice like that. Yeah. It just yeah. seems... It just doesn't add up for me. And it's just too... It's too unbelievable for me. And the first movie made it very clear that if you chose to go to another faction, it was okay, but you'd always be looked at weird. Right. And it forced that very hard, but you don't see any any indication of that later in that movie or in this movie. It's it's literally manufactured conflict. Yeah. Which is just, again, it's just like it's just it doesn't it doesn't feel natural. That's true. It feels forced. True. So true. that's how I feel about it, anyways. Um, I I don't know. I the movie wasn't bad. Wasn't. It wasn't the worst directing I've ever seen. It wasn't the worst script I've ever seen, but it really was not great. I didn't yeah. have super high hopes up for it, though, mm-hmm. so I just ex- expected it to be about the same as the last movie, and I've, right. you know, it came in right about there. I think they made some improvements. Um, I think the action was substantially better. Yeah, the action was smooth. I will say that. The action was very smooth. Yeah, the first movie, it was very, uh, it was just stiff uh, to use the, uh, <laughs> the opposite of what you said, yeah. but it really was. It just, it felt, it didn't even feel like it was uh, choreographed. It just felt, it felt like just real basic and nothing, mm-hmm. no, there's no style to it at all. Yeah. Um, a lot of tight shots where you can't even really see what's going on. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to something like, some of the best choreography ever, cho- choreographed fights, is like the Matrix movies. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, say what you will about those movies, but the fights were unbelievably good. Yeah. You know, that was all wide shot for the most part. They showed you what was going on. It had a physical feel to it, but the, the action in these movies have been very, just... Too, too in the middle of it, like just tight shots, and just not. You don't get a feel for anything. Yeah. It, do, it doesn't have any yeah. style to it. It's not unique to anything. And this movie was slightly better, the second one, Insurgent, but not much. And I still want a lot more out of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we we don't know the director <laughs> or the or the screenwriter. Uh, the main character is acted by an, an actress whose name does not come to mind. <laughs> Shailene Woodley. Okay. Yeah. Um, she's been in. She was in um, that movie that did really well last year that I can't think of either. Oh, uh, Fault in Our Stars. There you go. Yeah. See, this is why you're here. <laughs> this is why I have co-hosts, so I'm not just talking to myself. Um, <laughs> she. I think she does all right. Although some of her like pained expressions and her near cries are uh-huh. a little rough, and she squeaks a lot. True. <laughs> she does. Um, which. Wouldn't normally bother me, except it pulled me out of the movie Did a little it? bit. Yeah, um, I can see that. Like, especially when she's in that simulation and she jumps off the building to go around it with the, the rope. Yeah. And she squeaks on the way down, she and I was did. just like, oh my god. I noticed that. I was like, was there a mouse in there? What was that? <laughs> yeah. 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 It just, in the worst times, I, I don't know. She's they, They're obviously going for a tough aesthetic with the character. Mm-hmm. She's supposed to be rugged, but you just... I just do not buy that from Shailene Woodley. I think no. she, I think she's a fine actress, and I yeah. I think she's substantially better in this movie. Um, but I, I just don't get that. She just doesn't have that that tenacity. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, like I buy it from Jennifer Lawrence. She has that yeah. personality. Yeah. 
but I, I for some reason I just can't. I don't it, get it from her. It's hollow with with her. Yeah, yeah. I don't um, know. But she, I think she was better in this movie though. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ashley Judd's in this for a little bit. Uh huh. And that's she's all right. Yeah, she's fine. But her character isn't supposed to be out of the park or anything. No. Wait, Kate Winslet is okay. I mean, she had a little more to work with this time too. I yeah. think I think everybody did, but she really needed it. Man, that character in the first month, the first movie was. I, I know that Kate Winslet was pregnant when they filmed the first one, oh, okay. so maybe that hindered her performance a little bit. I'm yeah. not, don't want to be sexist. Don't don't blow up Nerds Domain website with sexist comments. Yes, yeah, so you want to go to obsessiveviewer.com. <laughs> That's um. right. Directed our. Hey, we'll take the traffic. We don't care. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I think she was a substantially more more formidable villain in this movie. Yeah. Um, I, I appreciated that performance. She's obviously a much more forefront of a villain in this movie. The, yeah. The, the last movie was everybody else is a villain. Oh, wait. Now she has a plot that right. she didn't quite see. This one she had a plot from the beginning. Which, yeah. But, you know, I felt good about that. There was a little bit of world building here. You got to see um, Amity, one of the factions, uh-huh. what they do and how they do it. Yeah. Which was great, except I didn't realize they were all supposed to be like peace-loving hippies. They're hippies, yeah. Threw me off a little bit too much. Yeah, and then we also saw the other, another faction called Candor, which was, yeah. that was, that was a pretty effective, it was, a pretty effective move, because mm-hmm. I, I don't know, it just, it added a level of authenticity, obviously, because it's Candor. Um, yep, yep. I don't know, it just, it was interesting seeing the, the truth serum scene and everything, that was, yeah, and, and, it was effective. The, there was, and it was a flip, because Amnity was very much emotional, and Candor was very much Lacking Logic. of that emotion, yeah, um, which I appreciated. Uh-huh. Um, and then we got to see some more of erudite, and yeah. that's the the super smart people. Uh huh. And I don't know that they just come off cold and yeah, like a bunch of jerks. Yeah, I, like, I mean they're clearly the villains. Yeah, you know, or or, um, or at least antagonistic. Um, but they, but back to the actors though, like yeah, I, absolutely. I'm a uh, I'm not quite sold on on Jay Courtney, okay. who was like the main lackey. Guy, I don't remember what his name is even. Yeah. In in the movie, Peter. but what is it? Peter. It's P. Oh, jeez. Peter. Yeah. Four and Triss and all these and cool Peter. names and Peter. That makes sense. Um. Yeah. He. He's very. He's just very. Um. He's very vanilla. Yeah. He's just like he's like you just plug him into a role, and he, just you know he's he's a very serviceable actor, but yeah. he just does not. He just has nothing to make him stand out. Well, and I, I feel like the character. He was playing was just dumb. That's true. Yeah, like 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 he didn't see that the person that betrayed everybody in the first movie was going to betray him. Like yeah, he seems to always play that character too. Because yeah. in uh, he was in the movie Jack Reacher, which I really liked okay. that movie. Okay, and he's basically the exact same kind of character. He's like a lackey for the true villain, <laughs> and he's pretty much the same thing in I Frankenstein, which we mentioned earlier. Is he in I yeah, he's That's one of the so angels. forgettable. Yeah, the only thing I remember is Bill Nye. Uh, Bill, not Bill Nye. Yeah, Bill Nye, right? <laughs> is it Bill? I can't. I can't remember. I tried to push not that movie Bill from Nye, memory. Bill Nye. Yeah, Bill Nye. Bill Nye. Yeah. Well, I, I just I I love him as an actor. And him oh being, yeah. What Satan or whatever? <laughs> Something like that. Was, he was he was fun at least. The rest of the movie not so much. Um, yeah. So Jay Courtney, I think. I mean. Uh, the jury's still out on him for me. Yeah. You know, he's got the Terminator movie coming up yeah. where he's the male lead. Yeah. I'm curious to see if he can actually shoulder that responsibility. Yeah, because that's a big one. And be interesting, you know? And, and play against uh, Arnold. Arnold Schwarzenegger um, and uh, Jason Clark. Yeah. Who and plays I, John Connor. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but Arnold has a screen presence, I'm sure. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and that's his movie. Like, yeah. That's his movie franchise. He's missed one of five. Yeah. I mean, and in... Right. And, 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 I don't know. We'll we'll see how that one goes. And that that fourth one was just a Christian Bale. Pretty thing. much, kind of a Christian Bale vehicle. Yeah, that and yeah. that was about it. It really, yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, tells you how good this movie is since we're talking about all these other movies. <laughs> exactly. Um, so I really, uh, I don't know. I don't know how, what to feel quite yet about. I don't know. The 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 movie was not bad. It was I okay. can't say it was bad. If you enjoyed the books. This might be something you want to go see. Right. If you enjoyed the first one, you thought it was great. I think you're going to have a better time. Yeah, I, I had a little bit better time, but I'm still not. Yeah. I'm still not sold. It's they're okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. the The soundtrack was mm, okay. I didn't. I, I can't recall it at all. Yeah. It I didn't. Mean, it didn't stand out in any way um, for me. The the new pseudo villain, um, Thor's mother, will mm-hmm. be interesting in the next one. 
I yeah, don't, I don't know. Kind of an anti-hero. Yeah, she's a bad actress. Uh, who is that? Naomi, Naomi Watts? When, well, four, or four's an idiot. Because she's <laughs> like, I don't know what happened to Tris. She must have left. Yeah, I she I have was... not seen her. That was like the... Man. And maybe it was just that scene, and it was the long day or something, but... <laughs> Man, that was a bad take. I, I I absolutely love Naomi Watts. She's one of my favorite actresses. Top three easily. Okay. She's just so terrific all the time. I think she's she's magnetic as an actress all the time. But that <laughs> that that, scene? that aspect was completely missing from yeah, this movie from I, her, I don't her know. performance. And I I want to chalk it up to the script or director or something. Naomi Watts was in. Like, I mean, she was King like Kong? King Kong. Okay, because um, I loved Kate, her in King Kong, and this one I. Just, I, I couldn't place her. It might have been the difference in the hair color. That would have, that probably was a big difference. Yeah, yeah. She's um, usually blonde. But but she was also very dry and not very. interesting. And maybe that's the other problem is I didn't go. Oh, yeah. Who's that? I went. Oh look, they found somebody to, to play this character. That's that's great. Well, I, you know, I don't she, really care. Over the past several years, she's done almost exclusively independent movies and small mm. movies. So maybe she just needed a paycheck. Um, that's true. I mean, yeah. sometimes King Kong money only takes you so far. Right. <laughs> so. Um, so, I don't know, we kind of, we, we talked to the movie. I, yeah. There's not a lot to comment on. No, it's, no. I mean, the the plot is, it, it's, it held my interest. I think it was very, it was pretty predictable. Yeah, though, yeah. Um, there were some very predictable moments. Oh, definitely. Um, and, and there's there's certainly some plot devices that were very lazy, I think. Yeah. Um, there's a, a part, that there were two... You could almost say three dream sequences in the movie. Yeah. Um, the opening is a dream suite sequence, and then there's one time where she's in a simulation, which is technically a dream, but they led the audience to believe that it's actually real life. Yeah. And you could just see through it like a veil. It was, yeah. There was yeah. just nothing to it. I, I, I got up partway through the movie, mm-hmm. um, like, I don't know, maybe 45 minutes in, and mm-hmm. came back, and felt like I didn't miss much, other than I was like, hey, who is that lady? And he's like, mom. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> Now I've gotten everything I needed, so I didn't even, I, I hate to say this, it's not even something I missed. Yeah. I, I don't feel like I missed much or missed enough to be confused. Right, right. Um, I can't think of the, the name of the, the male lead who plays Four. Yeah. Or uh, Tobias, whatever. Yeah. We learn his name in this movie. Every time I hear Tobias, all I can think is about is Q.D.K. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a way better character. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I mean, he blew himself, so. Yeah. <laughs> um. But he, again, I'm not sold on him, but I've seen him in far less things. I've only seen him in these two films. And I think I think there's potential there. Yeah. But the character is just, again, just very vanilla and dry. Not not specifically, not very specific. Um, wow. And so I, I'd be curious to see, I know he's British. I'd be curious to see what he can do in the future. Um, I, I want to see him break out of this franchise and do something. Maybe he's, he's yeah. better than Mercian. Yeah, I was totally, I was like confused as all crap, because I'm like, none of these people were in this movie. No, uh, his name is Theo James. <laughs> Theo James. It's okay. not a bad name. I kind of like that name. That, that's catchy, yeah. I want to say he was in something else that's that I've seen. Yeah, I don't know. Other than Underworld Awakening, which I have not seen, thank God. No, he has not been in anything. Really? Huh. Oh. He's hot. He's really hot. So. That, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with you on that. Yeah, I, guess. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um. So overall, kind of a star rating out of five. What do you think? I'd give it a really soft three. Okay. Just because maybe that's kind of knee jerk because the first one I I would have given the first one like one and a half. Okay. Um, but this I would give just for the areas they improved on. Um, oh, I'll I'll just give that to them. Okay, basically, fair yeah. Well, so, hey, they doubled. <laughs> yeah, they doubled, yeah. Um, I would have said the first one was probably like a two, two and a half. Okay. I would say this was probably easily a two and a half, maybe scooting over to the three. Yeah. This is something that if it were on TBS in the middle of the day and nothing else was on, I wouldn't go flip over to Netflix. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, there's some aspects here that I like. I like dream sequences when they're used appropriately. These right. didn't seem terrible. They weren't terrible. Um, they were used to, to keep us involved in the story and show us kind of the mindset of the character, which is hard, especially when you're going from a book. Yeah, that's true. To a movie. So I, I think they did a pretty good job of that. Mm-hmm. Um, I appreciated that. But I don't know. There's just not enough good here. You know? I know. It's, I, yeah, I wish I could put my finger on it. It's just not... It just seems off-key. Like off it slightly. is. Yeah. Um, 
I, I, I am looking forward to the last movie only to end the series because I like to end a series now. Right. You're um, completest. And, and yeah. because there's going to be more world building in the third world building in the third one and world building is kind of a thing for me. I love that kind of stuff. Oh, totally. So, yeah. Um, this one does end with a giant cliffhanger that can only explain that there will be another movie. The first movie you could walk away from and go, okay, we're done. Yeah, like, definitely. But this one definitely cannot do that. There, right. There's no option for that. Do you know, have they announced, are they are they actually going to do just, just a third movie and conclude it, or are they going to split <laughs> it like they do with everything that, now? That's a good question. I honestly don't know. I don't know I haven't either. seen anything. Um, if they went to do it in two separate movies, as long as it feels right and makes sense. But it um, never does, though. You know, you say that, and I at least with with uh, The Hungry and Mockingjay, which is just called Mocking Jay. Let's just be honest. Okay. <laughs> I hate when they take a movie franchise and name it after the first book. Yeah. <sighs> like Game of Thrones. Branding. I don't know. It's Maybe branding. we could have called it A Song of Ice and Fire. Yeah. Because um, I still would have watched that show. Song of Ice and Fire, I would have watched that show. Totally. Um, but Mocking Jay has a clear split in it, and they split in that way. Yeah. And I'm okay with I'm okay with the concept. Whether or, lot, or not the the fourth the third movie was any good, uh-huh. uh, it's up for debate, and that's fine. I didn't find it atrocious. I enjoyed it. Um, I liked what's her face from Game of Thrones. Um, Jennifer Lawrence. No, no, from Game of Thrones that oh. played. Um, she was going to marry oh, Joffrey. Oh yeah, um, <laughs> Natalie Dormer is the yeah, actress. She's yeah, she's in it, and yeah. she's fantastic, and does the character quite well. She's great. Yeah. Um, and actually, she's really strong in a couple of moments that she okay. needs to be. Um, when she explains why she joined the resistance and like she's strong and, and makes it clear and okay. um, I, I really feel for that. So I have yet to see that third movie, yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. I can't really comment on. Wait it. till it hit Netflix, Netflix, because it will. It will, yeah. Because Hunger Games went there, Catching Fire went there. Yeah. Just a matter of time. Right. Um, I don't know. I'm looking forward to the third movie for this one. I think that'll be great. Um, yeah. I don't know if I'm looking forward to it, but I'll go see it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah, it's that completionist in the world building. In that yeah. really looks forward to it. So, real quick while I have you, and since we're running a little short, uh-huh. might as well talk a little bit. So we saw a couple of previews this, this uh, tonight, mm-hmm. um, and you're going to be on our, we're, we're going to do two uh, movie re- movie drafts. We're going to yep. do one just in Nerds Domain in-house, and then we're going to do one that I like to call the Nerds Domain Border Skirmish, <laughs> um, where it's going to be myself from Nerds Domain, and then you, Mike, and Matt from mm-hmm. Obsessive Viewer. Our friend Dan over at When Nerds Collide, and our friend uh, Bruce over at Heroes and Villains. Okay. So all the six of us are going to get together and do a, a movie draft there. So you've been kind of studying up on movies over the summer. Definitely. You would have done that anyway because it's yeah. you know part of what you do for the podcast. Right. Is there anything specific you're looking forward to? Um, I'm really curious about uh, the Mad Max movie okay. that they're coming back with because I think uh, you know I, I saw the original back. When I was younger, and I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. Um. It's it's it held it holds up really well, even though it's from the '80s. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's Mel Gibson. <laughs> and it's, it was made like 300 bucks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um. But you know, they're. I just appreciate the fact that they're. It, it feels like a reboot, but they're. They're honoring the original. Yeah. The original franchise, um, because they. I mean, they brought back the director. Um, yeah. It's the same director, so I think I, I appreciate that they're, uh, respecting the 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 vision of the franchise there. Um, and I just, the, the trailer just makes it look like it's nonstop action. Yeah. And it's just like explosions all over the place. And you know, sometimes that makes for a crappy movie because they don't pay attention yeah. to the story and the script yeah. and all that. But, but sometimes, sometimes okay. it doesn't, I mean, sometimes you just don't care. I mean, Pacific Rim did not have the strongest of, of uh, scripts or storylines uh-huh. and still I enjoyed the crap out of that movie. Me too. I, I like that movie too. I, I, you know, I, I trashed it quite a bit, but <laughs> at the end of the day, I had a great time in the theater oh, yeah. with it. So, any anything else this summer that um, you, you think might be important? <laughs> well, obviously the Avengers sequel. I mean, uh, eh. <laughs> well, we got a we got a few sequels. Uh, Furious Seven comes out. Technically, that's the first movie of our draft. Oh, is it okay? So, uh, I I couldn't skip that one. Um, yeah, surely would have killed me. <laughs> they're, they're huge fans. Are they? Uh, also, it's a it's a nice uh, tactical way for me to drain her of all of her money before we get into anything. <laughs> nice, um, yeah. I, I love the Furious franchise too. I mean, there's some man, there's some real turds in that franchise. But the fifth one just revitalized everything. Yeah, yeah. and I think the sixth one they lost some momentum. But uh, I don't know. I think hopefully they pick it up with this one. It looks like it's 
it it's looks the most over the top yet. It looks like it's going to be over the top and ridiculous, which is exactly what I want out of that kind of movie. Like I want, I will go in expecting that. Yeah. And they're going to give it to me, so it'll be exactly what I want. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm I am looking forward to Avengers, um, but I I I hate it only because I have to keep avoiding it <laughs> in everything I do. Like oh, new Avengers, anything, and I'm like nope. Not gonna. I watched the trailer one time. Yeah. I'm only watching it one time. I'm never watching it again. <laughs> wow. Because Marvel movies have a tendency to tell the entire story through trailer. Sometimes, yeah. And that gets old and very crappy. And very yeah. Quick. So. I understand. Um, I don't know. There was something. There's a couple other movies this summer. Ant Man's coming out, and I'm kind of looking forward to that. I want to see how bad that's going to be. Yeah, I'm curious. Because it could be really good, but I'm I'm going to set my bar really low. And then that way, when it leaps way over it, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll be pleasantly surprised. Yeah. And if it just kind of limps over it, then it's still over that right. really low bar. Basically, for me, this year, after after Avengers comes out, I'll probably see that at least twice in the theater. Yeah. Um, it's just it's really just a waiting game for Star Wars in December. Oh, really? I mean, that's that's what 2015's about for me. Yeah, I, I, I have an even lower bar for Star Wars. Really? I, I can't wait to be disappointed. Oh, really? I, I just... Even after the, the prequel trilogy? The, see, the thing is... Can they go south from that? I... Uh, Phantom Menace bothers me. Uh-huh. I like the other two movies. Really? I, I, the choreographing of the fight scenes in 3... Yeah. Uh, it's phenomenal. Oh, three is a solid movie. It's phenomenal. Yeah. And you know what? The rest of it, I can just shut my mind off for it. <laughs> and, and that's, uh, I don't know. I've always I've always been able to watch Star Wars and enjoy it. And I've always been able to put it on in the background and not have to worry about it and not continually look at it. And, uh-huh. And just Star Wars always played for me. And with the, well, other than Phantom Menace, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of the Machete uh, order. Have you heard of this? Uh-uh. So you go four, five, two, three, six. Wow. Yeah, so that's you, interesting. You start with four, so you, you go through New Hope and you learn all about the characters. You yeah. see Empire Strikes Back. You learn that Luke or Luke's father is Vader. You learn all about Vader. You skip number one because everything is explained. The only thing you missed out on, and honestly, the best part of Phantom Menace is the fight scene at the end yeah. between Maul and Qui Gon and uh, Obi Wan. Yeah. That, that fight scene is, other than why in God's name would you be fighting somewhere with giant last shield things like that's stupid <laughs> yeah. fight somewhere else other right. than that like that fight scene is phenomenal it is they, that was one of the things they got right in that movie definitely yeah um, I can agree with that and if you just cut out the parts where you have to watch Anakin fly around in a stupid starfighter mm-hmm. eh um, <laughs> that's but, interesting but so two and three lead you into six so you have learned all about Luke learned all about Vader, and then 6 has more of an impact, and I actually <laughs> made sure to sit down and watch that order oh, really? one day. Just one day. Just, yeah. That's all we did that day. Oh my god. And and you know what? It has a better flow to it. It has a very specific mm. thing you can do, and you don't need one. Everything you learn in one uh-huh. gets explained to you in the opening credits and through like 15 minutes of dialogue, because they expect you to not know it. Yeah. They treat you like you're stupid. It's a really I know, unfortunate thing. That's really... I, I hadn't, hadn't thought of that. I might have to try that, because I haven't watched the prequels in a while, for obvious reasons. Um, <laughs> I suggest huh. that you find on YouTube where they have taken the do- the Dark Maul fight scene and yeah. put it all together, because they have somewhere, I'm sure. Yeah. You watch that right before we watch 2. So you just huh. go four, five, two, three, six. You know, I'm interested in that, too, because um, I know uh, Topher Grace, the actor, he, uh, at one point... Somewhere in L.A., he actually took the the first three movies, yeah. and he he did his own edit and edited them into one movie. It was like three and a half hours, but he cut out. He just made it about Anakin Skywalker. Oh yeah, and just just about that the evolution of that character and how all of the conflict centers around him. Yeah. Um. And I've I've never seen it. He can't obviously he can't distribute it and make money off of it because right. it's a you know it's a private whatever uh, trademark stuff, but. I've had I've heard someone describe it to me. He he left out the only parts of Phantom Menace he left in were like fifteen minutes, if that. Yeah. And then everything else is from two and three. But um, so I'm always interested in that because you know the the interested in stuff like that where people re-edit like really oh, yeah. famous properties. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I might check that out at some point. I'm going to rewatch the movies before December. Yeah. I, um, I, I, it's that plus everything that I grew up reading. Uh-huh. Is now invalidated. That's what sucks. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know if you what where you grew up. I think we're around the same age. Um, I'm, I'm twenty eight. Okay, so you're a few years younger than I am. Uh-huh. Um, 
but there was uh, a slew of books, and yeah. I, I started reading all of them. And so everything up until they hit like the New Jedi Order, mm-hmm. I read all of that. And to me, that's why Star Wars canon. And then Disney bought it, and they went, we're going to make a new one, number yeah. seven. And I went, okay. All of it is now invalid, and stuff like... A Thrawn the trilogy. The trilogies, or the, 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 pre- tri- the prequels, invalidated some of it, like where Boba Fett come, came from. Right. But the Thrawn trilogy is amazing. I've read the first phenomenal. book. Oh. I read the first book, and it was floored. I loved it so much. They're, Thrawn makes such a compelling villain. Yeah. And does things in the proper villain way, and he gets defeated. Oh, well. But that Thrawn actually sets up several other books because, Mm -hmm. well, when Thrawn came back and he did all these things, he set other things in motion that you didn't see in that trilogy. Right. Which I understand is probably editorial's way of going, oh, we should bring people back around to Thrawn. But it was at least handled in a way that made you feel like, oh, well, we're still dealing with this, the the, the last parts of this. Right. um, That's fair. I don't know. I... hmm. I love Star Wars, man. I just, it's just one of those things. I watched it with my dad when I was a kid. He, yeah. My dad introduced me to it, and I was like, there's there's swords that glow. Man, how yeah. can I not love this? You know? well, and everybody was up in arms about the stupid Sith sword with the stupid crossbow. Oh, yeah. And, and all I can think is, guys, if Lucas had any hand in this, that is going to be by far not the worst thing. <laughs> like, it'll be Jar Jar shows up again for no reason whatsoever, or <laughs> we have another character that tries too hard yeah. To be whatever they think they need to be. Right, right. Um, I have a friend, I have a guy I know, I won't call him a friend, <laughs> um, who really defends all of the Star Wars movies and explains why it has to be that way. And yeah. It doesn't, it really doesn't. You can make a better movie. <laughs> true, true. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm one of the guys that watched the trailer when it came out and got choked up. I mean, yeah. it just, it just it hits that nostalgic bone in your body. And, yeah. And it's just awesome. Yeah. I'm just I one of those guys. I don't know. Yeah. To each their own, I guess. Yeah. At least it's not the Hobbit. Like, we went and saw the, the first Hobbit movie, and I was like, this isn't bad. Yeah. <laughs> and then we went and saw the second one, and I'm like, what happened here? Like, what went from okay to terrible? Yeah. And when did Thor and Oakenshield turn into a villain? Because I don't want this anymore. I know. Yeah. And then we never, I've yet to see the third one. Like, we saw the first two in the theater. We did an yeah. immediate movie re- review for one of them. Uh-huh. And the third one, I, um, it, it came out, and I was like, eh. It's, I, we it's could not go very good. see it, I guess. It's not very good. Yeah. The second one had a great ending. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, there were barrels that were ridiculous. There were what? Barrels in the second uh, one. Oh, the barrel. Yeah. Ugh. It was kind of cool, but it was ridiculous. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, the goblin thing, like, I can accept a Rube Goldberg device once yes. in a trilogy. Yeah. But, like, to explain that the dwarves are so good at only one thing, and that yeah. thing is Rube Goldberg devices, <laughs> I cannot accept this. <laughs> I can't. It's magic, Matt. Well, I mean, I get but they're not supposed to be dexterous like that. If it were a bunch of elves, I'd be like, no, okay, yeah, sure, why not? But, uh... That's fair. I got you. I don't know. Okay. Ugh. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't fight you on that one. Is there anything else coming out this summer that's <laughs> exciting? I should know. We have a whole list. Yeah, there is Sadly, list. I can't access from my mobile device, because box yeah. office movie draft is great until you're on a office or on a mobile device yeah well i mean i remember at uh starbase indie was a, a, a um convention that that we were at and we got, I got our foot in the door because of you because you yeah. mentioned us to the, the runners on that the, the people who ran that show um and we did a panel about the summer movie um the upcoming summer movie series or uh, you know yeah slate of all the movies that are coming up um, so we have an episode about that, and we we went in pretty pretty good detail about all the big movies that were coming out. Um, so if you would check, you can check that out, and we we go into some pretty heavy detail about the that, summer. That was there. back in November, so that should be on your feed somewhere in November, right? Yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. Yeah, should we, I definitely should check that out. There we are. Um, I'm trying to think, if there's anything else? There were a bunch of movies this summer that I was like, eh. Pixels looks like it'll be fun. It does, yeah. Um, although. Uh, we talked briefly about Adam Sandler being a part of it, and that could always go bad. Yeah, that's not a high point anymore. <laughs> <laughs> if it ever was, really. Um, and Kevin James is in it, which just means it's Adam Sandler got his buddy a, a movie. Role, yeah. Which I don't have a problem with Kevin James. I actually found Paul Blart Mall Cap the first one because I haven't seen the second one. Yeah. I found it funny enough. Um, yeah. Uh, it wasn't. It you know it wasn't. Uh, I Frankenstein. Yeah. I think Kevin James has a lot of potential, but. 
Yeah. He, he's failed to tap it. Uh, his stand-up's funny. I like his stand-up. Oh, Jurassic World is coming out. What am I thinking? Oh, geez. How can we forget Chris Pratt? Oh, I don't care about that. I want what to see dinosaurs. Dinosaur, what kind of dinosaur did you cook up in that lab there? <laughs> or whatever he says in the trailer. Yeah, and then Minions. Minions will be out. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Oh, and then the remake of a classic film, Point Break. The remake of Point Break? <laughs> I didn't even know that. It's it's one of the movies coming out this summer. Why would they do that? I, well, you know, honestly, if it's on TBS, I stop. That movie's so great. The movie is ridiculously bad and great exactly, at the same yeah. time. Exactly, yeah. I don't understand how they did that. Oh, man, I love that movie. That's, that's unfortunate. That's just unnecessary. Oh, no, I don't know. Keanu nah. Reeves isn't going to be in it. Uh, that sucks. <laughs> that really sucks. I'm, I'm sad now. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to Point Break just to see how terrible it's going to be. Yeah, I'll and see you never that. know. It may be like the next um, Bad Boys and be just phenomenal. <laughs> phenomenal in all of its ridiculousness. Yeah, it could be. Oh. I'm very skeptical. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> all right, so you want to tell everybody a, a little bit about Obsessive Viewer if they haven't heard it before on our, uh, what was that, our Jurassic Park episode you guys were on. Yeah, uh, Obsessive Viewer is a, a weekly podcast where we discuss movie and TV shows, and we uh, it's topic-driven. We discuss, uh, you know, some kind of show or movie or, or, or uh, series, stuff like that. Um, our favorite party movies, favorite TV dads, favorite death scenes, all kinds <laughs> of crazy stuff. Um, we got all kinds of stuff we talk about, so um, you can find it uh, at obpodcast.com for the podcast and we also have a blog that goes along with it um it's mostly matt who does reviews for that um it's obsessiveviewer.com you can go to facebook search for the obsessive viewer you'll find it there um you can follow all three of us on twitter i'm at obsessive tiny matt is at obsessive viewer and mike is at i am mike white um and shoot us an email uh you can send an email to tiny mike or matt at obsessiveviewer.com um hit us up on twitter yeah. Interact with us, whatever you want to do. And they are serious about being obsessive viewers. They, you guys watched some ridiculous number of movies yeah, last year. Yeah, like, just, just me. It was my goal last year. I watched 366 movies total. Which means that's that that you watched, one day you watched two movies. Every other day you watched one. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It was pretty bad. I can't imagine that. Yeah, I watched one movie for every single day of the year. So, yep, it was, uh, it was tough. I'm pretty burnt. I've only watched like this year. Uh, it's, you know, late March, mid-March. I've watched, like, 20 movies total. Wow. Because I, I really burnt myself out, so... Did you watch any of those movies more than once? A couple of them, yeah. Like, I probably watched Avengers more than once. Oh, fair enough. Um, some other stuff I probably watched more than once. We watched but... Groundhog's Day the other day. Yeah. And I could watch that movie, like, once a month. That's a great movie. I, I forgot how dark it gets. It does. Because it gets dark. Real dark. A little bit, dark. A little bit yeah. Um... All right, and then you also do the secular perspective. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, just a little bit. That's uh, that's a little different. Uh, that's just about um, we talk about religion and, and faith, and it's from the perspective of me and my my friend Chad. We're we're both atheists, and we we just talk about local or uh, recent news about um, religion and, and what's going on. There's a lot of we kind of mention politics pretty regularly. Um, but it's we try to be friendly. Sometimes we get yeah. all mean. We mentioned Cam, Ken Ham from the Ark Encounter, and from uh, Answers in Genesis, like every single episode, because that guy's nuts. Um, he, he he provides material. He's I mean, funny. He really does. Yeah, we can't not mention the guy. So, but yeah, we just kind of have fun with it. Um, we're working on some stuff for that. We talk about movies a lot on that as well. So we uh, we have an episode coming out about the movie Saved, okay. which is a, a really enjoyable movie. So um, yeah, check that out if you're into that kind of thing. If you're not. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Um, I think that'll do us tonight for the Nerds Made Podcast. Uh, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter. You can head over to the website and sign up for the newsletter. Uh, you could go over to Patreon.com, like we talked about earlier, and sign up there and support us. Uh, I'm missing something that's important. Give us five stars. There's where That's where it is. Um, <laughs> give us five-star reviews over on iTunes. We really appreciate that stuff. Um, and you can find our shirts over at Slash Loot. And we will talk to you guys real soon. 